Today on our 2010 Mini Cooper, we're going to be doing an installation of the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms, part number BX1307. Now that we've got our fascia all put back in place, all of our fasteners reconnected, you'll get a good idea of what the base plate's going to look like. See, we just got a few things sticking out here in the front, not too noticeable with the removable arms. As you can see, it kind of blends in rather than the uh, permanent fixture arms. They kind of stick out a little bit further, a little bit easier to see. And notice we trimmed out up here on the grill area for our breakaway switch as well. Um, depending on your application, that may be something you need to do. It just depends on where you're going to be putting it and, uh, and what different parts you're going to be using. Uh, the great part about the base plate allows you to pull your car behind your RV safely. You're not going to have to worry about it being on a trailer and the brakes of the trailer functioning, wiring on the trailer, different stuff like that. Now when it's time to hook up to our RV, very simple operation here. We're just going to slide our arm in. As you can see, it's like a, a T-slot in there. We'll slide it in until we can press our pin, press it in and just rotate it around. Our pin's going to click into position and then we can easily hook onto our tow bar, get connected to the RV and head down the road. In addition to that, we're going to have the loop that sticks out here. That's for our safety chain, so we can hook our car to our RV um, via the base plate here. The base plate is also going to be secured by permanent safety straps that are going to go around the frame of the vehicle to make sure that doesn't come off as well. You're going to have convenient connections down here to hook up any kind of wiring that you're going to need to connect in. Our customer's gone wireless with this setup, so we don't have our box sticking out of there. But if you're going to be wired, you will have your connection there. First thing we need to do is open our hood up. That's going to allow us to get to the four push pin fasteners here holding our grill in place. We'll just use a small screwdriver or a pick and you want to pull out on that center core and then by grabbing that center core you'll be able to pull the larger core that goes in out. Now since this particular Cooper is equipped with lights, there's going to be a nut here and a small screw here that we need to remove on both sides. That's going to release the bracket that holds our light in place. Now the screw in here requires a torque bit. I'm using just a little right angle driver to, to do it with. As you can see, that loosens our light up so it'll come off with our grill. But we do want to keep in mind, we want to pull the plug because we don't want to stretch that wire out. Slide that apart there. Now that light's going to be completely free to come off with the grill. Let's head over here to the driver's side and do that same thing. With both of our fog lights loose here, we're now going to pull out and press down slightly on the grill going to allow it to slide out. We'll want to work from one side over to the other and just take your time with it and kind of ease it out of there. And now we'll set this aside to be put back in after we're done. Now the next step would typically be to remove the T25 fastener located here on both of our tabs, but since the fog lights were installed, that bolt was actually holding those in place. So with fog lights, that step you won't have to do again. Without fog lights, you will need to remove those two bolts. Now here in the wheel well, we're gonna remove the two push pin fasteners, one located up here, one located down here. As you can see, I've turned the tires quite a bit just to give us a, uh, a little bit of room to get in here and work. This one down here spun on me, so what I'm going to do is just put a little screwdriver or a pick in behind it and kind of pull out as we turn here. And there you see it'll thread out of there, okay. Pull that one out, and now let's do the top one. With these, you just kind of unthread the core and then you can pull them right out. And 
Now over here on the passenger side, we're just gonna repeat that same process. All right, and we'll set all four of those aside to reuse later. Now we're gonna push back the wheel well cover here. As you can see, it's a nice foldable material. I like to kind of tuck it up behind that tire. That way I'm not fighting it and trying to hold it. Then right here at the intersection, just on the back side, we're gonna have a push pin. We'll remove that one. And the one located, it's really hard to see, but there's a little angled bracket here. It's gonna match the color of your car. There's one located in there that's facing towards the inside. Now just above that last push pin we removed, there's gonna be a T25 bolt. That also is gonna to need to be removed. You kinda of pull out on the fender here to give you a little bit of room. You see on the outer edge of our bumper here, we're gonna have another T25 bolt. We need to remove this. And there's one on the other side. It's gonna be in the exact same location that we'll remove as well. Now we're back to our old buddies, the push pins. Just like the other ones, you pull that center core out, just work it kind of easily. And you see with the five of those fasteners removed, the lower portion, it's gonna be nice and loose. Now we'll need to separate this seam right here. Our side panel or the black panel that comes around just slips right into the front. So let's pull out on that panel as we push in on the fascia. You see how that just kind of pops out of those two tabs right there. It's going to leave that top nice and loose for us. Now, as we pull out, we need to start disconnecting any of the lights, the side markers, the fog lights, whatever the case may be, get these disconnected. There's also a temperature sensor. It's going to be located in behind the grill that we'll need to get unhooked as well. You will have a connection right up here. You just kind of want to push in, push the tab, and pull out on it. And then the, the oblong connection that's here on the side, you want to squeeze in on the side of that. And again, pushing in can kind of help you with that. And then pull it out. Once we have the two connections here done done, and the three connections on the passenger side undone, with an extra set of hands here, we can just set it down. All right, now for our modifications, we're gonna make an inch and a quarter hole on the top of our bumper support here on both sides. There's already a small hole there that we can use for a guide. We've got an inch and a quarter hole saw. We'll just place that in and start drilling it out. With our holes drilled in the top on both sides, it's now time to take the bolt that's located just underneath that hole on the outside edge, and we need to cut that off flush with the head of the bolt. Of course, we're gonna do this here on the passenger side and also on the driver's side. It's now gonna be time to put the base plate up into place. Now to secure it in place, we're gonna use one of the eight millimeter by 50 millimeter bolts. As you can see, we've got our red Loctite on there. It's recommended to use that on every fastener. And what we've had to do in this particular case it's just grind part of the washers off. Each car is gonna be a little bit different and sometimes modifications need to be made. We'll lift our base plate up and we'll allow it to slide into place. Then we'll just thread that bolt in to the weld nut that's already existing in our vehicle. Now let's head over to the other side and do that same thing. Then we'll go ahead and tighten down both of our bolts. Now the hole just above the bolt we just put in, we wanna take a drill bit, refer to your instructions, it'll tell you the size, and we're gonna cut this out.
All right, with that one drilled out, let's go over and take care of the other side. Now in the hole we just drilled out, we're gonna place one of our 3 eighths of an inch by inch and a quarter bolts right up and through there. As you can see, we've got our Loctite on there. And then here at the top, we'll bring a handle nut. That's gonna go down and in. And then it'll be threaded onto our bolt. We'll get that bolt in place on both sides of the vehicle. We'll now tighten down both of the bolts we just put in. And refer into the instructions and it'll tell you the proper torque spec to get these set at. Let's go take care of the other side. Now we've got those secure, we'll finish torquing down the initial bolt that we had installed, our metric bolt that has our two washers and our lock washer on it. When we're done with that one, let's head over to the passenger side and torque that one down as well. We'll also drill out the hole just in front of that, located just behind our base plate rail. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now install the front bolt and nut. Now with those torqued down, let's get our side holes started. Now we're gonna drill out the two holes that are on each side of our base plate. We've got two here on the driver's side, two on the passenger side. Now in the holes that we just drilled out, we're gonna place another 3 8 by inch and a quarter bolt through. And just like we did on the bottom one, we want a lock washer to be on there. And then we'll bring our plate nut, whatever you want to call it as you see. You can kind of bend it around there a little bit to help guide it in where you need it. Just tighten that one down a little bit for right now. We don't want to get overzealous with it. We still need to line up our hole here. Another one of our handle nuts or flange nuts. Now with both of them installed, we'll just tighten them down and then get our torque wrench out and set them to specification. Now we'll head over to the passenger side and we can repeat that same process. Now we're just going to trim off the tabs that we have there. Then you can just kind of push those down and in a little screwdriver or something can help. Make sure it's just flush with the top there. Now if you remember from earlier in the install, when we removed our grill area here, we had to take a 13 millimeter hex bolt, or hex nut, off of this bolt because that, that fog light flange fit right in behind it. If you have the fog lights, this nut's already gonna be removed. There's a spacer block that you'll slide right into place here. Now, if you don't have the fog light attachment, then you will have to remove your hex bolt, place that on, then put your hex bolt back on. Since we still have to put our fog lights on, we're going to be waiting to put this on until after we get our grill installed. Now let's route our safety cables around our base plate and the frame of the vehicle. This is going to act as our emergency connection between our vehicle and the base plate in case of failure. We'll then place the loop ends of the cable into our quick connect then attach it to our base plate. Let's add in our breakaway switch bracket now. We're going to attach it to our upper radiator support using the hole. It's located just to the right of this oblong hole. Then using the supplies hardware, we can attach it securely.
Now with our base plate secured to the front of the vehicle, now's a good time to put on a breakaway switch or any other accessories that you're gonna need mounted in behind your grill and fascia because we're gonna be going back on with that. We're also gonna be taping off the large holes we cut in the frame. This is just gonna protect it from any water, dirt, and stuff like that from getting in. And we're also gonna cover this with a coat of spray paint. We can then repeat that process here on the other side. Now it's time for the front fascia to go back into place. What we're gonna do is temporarily put it up there. An extra set of hands is a good idea. And uh, we're gonna mark out the cuts we need to make. So we'll come down here, we'll look through the fascia, and we wanna cut out just enough to allow for the circular and rectangular pieces to come through, and if need be, for our wiring connections down here at the bottom. Now we're gonna mark this off. I'm just using a, a yellow crayon here, but you can use any kind of light colored marker. And we wanna trim out just enough for this to fit through. You'll have to go all the way over in this application to one of the corners. You don't want one of the fins just kind of hanging out there dangling. As you can see, I've marked off the entire area that I anticipate removing, and I've made sure I don't have a lot of crayon or a lot of color on the areas I don't. Once they're gone, it's really hard to glue them back on, so take a good look at it, make sure you're only taking out the areas that you want to take out, and then we can make our cuts. You can see what our hole look like there. We're just going to clean it up and then we'll go test it after we get the other one cut out here. If we haven't cut out enough, we can cut out a little bit more. Now that we've got our cutouts made here, we're going to put it back up in place. And as we do this, we'll want to reconnect all the connectors that we disassembled earlier. And as before, an extra set of hands is always helpful kind of help hold it up as we're making those. We now, as you can see, we've just loosely started our two T25s up here. We're just gonna use that to kind of hold the fascia in place for now. While we go around the outside here, just wanna fit all of our clips and everything in. make sure everything lines up as we go. We'll then go through and reattach the fascia with all the fasteners we removed earlier. That's going to complete today's look and installation of the Blue Ox base plate kit with the removable arms, part number BX1307.